I wasn't quite too sure about this, and I, I don't know. Do you get mailed your census papers, or you do it online? They must be in my letterbox. I have no idea. It's the census tomorrow night, where the stats department counts all the things and decides who's a smoker and who's not, and who's a man and who's a woman, and where you live and what you earn, and it all goes into statistics that help the government screw things up. Um, but there is a new section in this year's census. And it has to do with gender. And it's got a few people, well, talking. Uh, one of the groups that is talking about these new questions is uh, the Speak Up for Women, an organisation we talk to occasionally who have, I think, strident and well thought out positions on things like um, guys playing women's sport and the like and uh, people who dress up, men who dress up as women using women's toilets. But what is the issue that they have with the census? Suzanne Levy, a spokesperson for Speak Up for Women, joins us now. Suzanne, nice to talk to you again. How are you? Oh, oh good, thanks, Sean. How are you? Very well. What is the question we're being asked in the census tomorrow night that has you concerned? Well, actually, firstly, the census is not tomorrow night. Oh, it's, it's not tomorrow Tuesday night. Week, so oh, Tuesday week. Oh, Tuesday week, is it? Oh, we've got a whole week to, yeah. to get outraged about yeah, this. Yeah, we've, we've got a whole week to get outraged. So, yeah. you know, just just start warming up. So what they're doing is they're asking two questions. One of them relates to gender identity. Um, yeah. One relates to sex. So um, the way they're doing it is the gender question comes first. So if you're doing the online form, you see a question that says, what is your gender? They call it gender rather than gender identity, which yeah. is how they describe it. Um, and you have the option of female or male or another gender. So, you know, female and male, very much. What yes. other genders so, are there? Oh, oh there, are, there are 47 that they have listed as recognisable kind of um, acceptable options. If you, if you tick the another gender box, you can type in various things. You can choose what you type. Um, if it matches um, one of their kind of... And they ask that question first before the male or female question? Well, they, well, it's worse than that. They actually use the terms male and female. So I think most people will think that it is the sex question. But I don't think they'll realise, and especially if you're doing it online, because you're not looking at the whole the whole questionnaire. You're looking at a question at one at a time. So, so they, they ask the you question. what gender, and they don't say what gender you identify. Do they say, what does the question say precisely, Suzanne? Um, the question says, what is your gender? And you have male, female, or another gender, yeah. in which case, please state. If you look at their definition of gender, it refers to it as being a, a social or personal identity, and they, and they recognise that not everybody has a gender identity, yet there's no way So you to, can say none? Um, you can say none? Uh, no, you can't. Oh. Um, well, you can, tick, you can tick the another gender option and you can type none, but all that will be recorded as is if you were, as if you were another gender. And obviously no, no gender is not the same as another gender. So uh, the genders like, they've got, can I identify as bloke? Um, yeah, you can. Well, the thing with identity, Sean, is you can identify whoever you like. You know, that's the wonderful so thing about it. So it's kind of, why but, do you think they've put this question in, Suzanne? What, what, what are you thinking well, is their reasoning? Well, I know what their reasoning is. They're moving to a, a reporting standard that uses gender by default. So at the end of the day, when they collect all this data, um, when they tell us about the data and they say that there are this, you know, this percentage of women and this percentage of men, when they say women, they actually mean, they will actually mean people who identify as women not women. Yeah, but so how many of them out can, there? Is it going to be statistically relevant anyway? Well, it's going to be bad stats anyway because the, the next question is a sex question. Yeah. And um, my guess would be that um, if, you're, uh, trans, if you are transgender, you may well answer the gender question and not answer the sex at birth question, in which case... You know, you're going to have all... They do all have only place. two sexes you can be. Please tell me that. Yeah. Uh, yes, they do. Uh, it's yes. just male Except and female. You'll be, you'll, be, you'll be pleased to know that stats have a definition of um, of sex that is they admit is different to a lot of scientific and medical places that says that your sex can change over your lifetime, which is 
I don't know, quite fascinating. But the, I guess the main issue that, that we have with it is that stats are using gender identity, as a, which is an ideological concept, and they're forcing everyone to answer it as if it's a real thing with no option to object and no option to not answer. So basically, um, we, sh- we think it should be like the religion question. So you should be able to say that you don't have a gender identity or you should be able to even say that you object to answering the question. Yeah. Um, the problem is that stats need a gender, a gender marker for every single person because it's the thing they're going to be using for all of their data. They don't really care about sex. So they basically force you to enter something. If you don't enter anything, if you, say, answer the sex question and you leave the gender question blank, which you can only really do on yeah. the paper forms, um, they fill it in for you. They will, yeah. they will populate the, the gender yeah. with the same as your sex. Was there you any objection when they... Look, look, I'm just... I'll be honest, Suzanne. I can get the, the inconsistency in all this, but... Look, who's it going to hurt? Um, it's going to hurt people who don't believe in gender identity in the same way. It's like asking somebody to answer the religion question and not accepting that they have no religion. Okay, so you would so, be cool with this if there was the option to not answer or say, I consider that an intrusive question. Absolutely. If you could say that I have no gender um, or, you know, I think with the religious, with the religious question, Yep. You have, it's pretty straightforward, you write in your religion um, and you have an option to just to tick no religion or object to answering. And I think... And that would satisfy question, Speak Up for Women? <clears throat> that would. Okay. Yes, it would how be, would, um, Suzanne, how would, and Speak Up for Women is fundamentally a feminist organisation, how would, how does this question as it stands now threaten women? How does it threaten women? Okay, so the, the data that we collect, or well, that Stats collect, talks about things like, say, say the gender pay gap, which mm. uses the word gender, um, because, you know, back 20 years ago when that sort of I, thing was talked about, yeah. gender, um, gender meant the same as sex. So, but if you, if you take that, that sort of data and you, you look at the, the gender pay gap, um, and you say that, you know, the gap between men and women is whatever, under this new sort of um, da- uh, gender by default thing, the women you're talking about will include men. Okay, and but statistically, the men. number of people that are going to answer the certain way is not going to be statistically significant. We don't, well, well, we don't know. Well, why, why change it to, to okay. satisfy well, the other thing, I, I've got a text in here, Suzanne, that says uh, questions 29 and 30 do have a prefer not to answer. Yes, but that, they're not the questions we're talking about. Oh, okay. Okay, that's right. Yeah, that, that, that's to do with, yeah so that's to do with your sexuality um, yeah. and you, you don't have to answer. What are those is, ones? And, um, you can be heterosexual slash straight. You can be gay or lesbian. You can be bisexual, or yeah. you can be um, another identity. Do they use cis? Do they use the no, word? No, because that's to, do with, that's to do with gender, not to do with sexuality. All right. So this quite, sound, you know, this whole the census sounds a bit creepy, to be honest, Suzanne. And, and the other interesting thing is that we've been, as part of our campaign, we've been asking people to um, email stats. And through their helpline and, and ring as they can, but no one can get through. And I just ask a simple question. They're supposed to say, I don't believe in, I don't, I'm sorry, I object to the gender question. What happens if I don't answer? Okay, and do you want, because we've got stats on after eight. Okay. So yeah. what do you want me to ask him? Well, well, I mean, he will probably be aware of this because we've highlighted yeah. it, but the answers they're giving are not, are not true. People are being told that they... That okay, they, you're um, saying they're lying. What, when are they lying? What are they lying about? They're lying in what happens if you don't make a response. So people, people are being told... Not everybody, but some people are being told um, yeah. that if they don't fill out the form, if they, you know, if they don't answer the gender question, that I've got one example. It says, no, it will not be devoted to anything. If the field is left blank, we cannot force an option to be there, so no yeah. data will be attained. That's just simply not true. Um, another one. How do you know that that's not true? How do you know that's not because true? It, oh, stats have admitted it's not true. I've been in touch with their. We've been, I've been dealing with a, a really helpful person at stats 
um, for the last um, few weeks over this, just to clarify the the options. Um, she's probably well and truly sick of me, but I've been just trying to get the facts straight before we. So, what are order. they going to do if you do not not answer? What are they going to default to? Um, the, the, your answer for the sex question. Okay, it's so amazing they didn't the, put the sex question first. That's the most basic question. And yeah. since are you an innie or an Audi? You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you'd accept that they're they're not using that data by default anymore. So whether they collect your sex your sex data is not as important to them as your gender. Okay. Do you know? Do you have any default. background as to why they have done it this way, and if whether or not they considered the issues that they were creating with this? Um, there's been there was there was quite a lot of consultation on it. We certainly consulted, you know, yeah. or we certainly submitted quite a lot of stuff about the whole the whole thing of gender by default. Yeah. Um, and it was pretty much ignored. I had a really interesting conversation with a guy about the fact that, that you wouldn't be able to identify lesbians as a group with the way that they collect data because yeah. in the in their terminology there would be men men who were who identified as women and were same-sex attracted would be categorised the same as, as yeah. me, for example. So yeah. it's, um, which I think is really sad because they're suddenly, or, you know, all of a sudden collecting information on the so-called rainbow community, yet they can't actually provide an answer to a question as simple as yeah. how many gay men are Okay, Suzanne, what is your, what, what are you going to do Tuesday week when you're sitting I'm not down? Answer- yeah. I'm not answering. I'm, I'm refusing to answer the census. We're considering a boycott. What, the whole thing, boycott. Suzanne? Yeah. On, we're considering boycotting it on the grounds that it's not possible to answer the question accurately. Yeah, I have so to you boycott the whole thing. Saying, Why not just for, not fill out that bit? Because they fill it out for me. Okay. But you're, you, you wouldn't do the whole census in protest? Well, there's no... I would. I would love... I, I love the idea of a census. So I do family research. I, I love filling them in because I think about, you know, the next person 100 years down the track. But the fact is, I, I can't fill it in. If I, if I fill it in, then I get recorded as having a gender identity that I don't have. Well, do and you not have, have a gender well. identity? No, I don't. I don't believe in it. I don't have one. I'm, I have a sex and I'm female and I have a, yeah. you know, a personality. So and you are I you don't, are. yeah, I don't. I am who I am. Yeah, yeah. So it's not a it's not a gender identity. So I can't I can't answer the question. You know, and I have to sign a declaration at the end of it that says it's true. Okay. And I can't I can't answer the question. What would get you to fill out the census? What would you need to hear? And let's presume they can't reprint them now, Suzanne. If they yeah. did say they would simply not collect data if you didn't answer that the gender question. Yeah, as, as they said that. Yes. That would solve your said, problem. So it, it would solve the problem for, for most people. If you were able to not answer the question, just to yeah. leave the whole question blank, and to yeah. have that have nothing recorded next to your name yeah. um, or your identity thing, um, that, that would be, that would, um, that for the, in terms of the census, that would satisfy most people. It probably wouldn't satisfy people who don't, want gender used as the default, but that's almost another, at, at this point we're contemplating on the way they're collecting the data. The way they use the data at the end of it is another another argument for another day. Yeah. But at this point, it's it's about the fact that you can't give a an honest and complete answer uh, to a question. So, it's, it's and a little then, bit I just like, want to get this exactly, what does the question about gender say? It just says, what is your gender? What and you is can say your male. Gen- yeah. What is your, yeah. Uh, male, female, or another gender. The other thing they do is the the terminology. Um, they say gender, but if you read their definition, they really they're describing gender identity, which is a little bit different. And, and I think if they said, "What is your gender identity?" and there was an option to say, "I don't have one," most people would say they didn't have one. Mm. Do so you the way think the this is part defined, of of the transgender or the? Oh, I don't know, LBT, I can't keep up, LBT, do you guys? They want to be statistically relevant? They want to be in statistics? Well, so, they should be in statistics. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's not... Every, everybody should be... You know, the, the idea of not being counted is, is, is not great, but this doesn't fix that. This just doesn't count people who don't believe in it. Yeah. It's sort of, you know, so... 
who do you, you know, who do you want to exclude? You know, who, yeah. yeah. So I think um, there, there would be a way of answering this asking this question if you said, you know, at the very beginning, do you have a gender identity? Yeah. And all right. No, then that's that. Yeah. If you tick yes, then you can, you can tell okay, us all about well, it. Okay, well, we have got, could you please, start, after the news at eight, we've got Jason Atwell from Stats New Zealand and going to put these issues yep. to him. And Suzanne, I thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. Always a pleasure. Thanks, John. Cheers. Okay.